Okay, so today we are going to start with the new topic that is regarding the software and the software topic includes with the two stuff that you may say is regarding the operating system as well as it is regarding the languages and language translators. So when we start with the software, so always do remember that software is classified into two categories, a system software and an application software as you can see on the screen as well. System software basically includes with the translators, utility softwares, disk drivers, and most importantly, with the operating systems. But when it comes to the application software, so there are two types of the application software, the general purpose and then a special purpose. So general purpose softwares are basically the type of the softwares that are designed to perform multiple tasks. Like for example, Microsoft Word. You may note down the, you may have created a, a document over there, you may have, uh, you may put up the charts over there, you may put up the graphs over there, and all the things. But when it comes to the special type of the software, so these are the type of the softwares that are basically designed to perform a particular task. Like, for example, um, if you're playing a subway surfer, so subway surfer, can, you can play only that game onto that, nothing else apart from that. But when it comes to the system software, so these are the softwares or these are the things that are basically helping the operating system to run or basically managing different type of the softwares to run the system. That includes the translators. We will be uh, dealing with the translator in detail. Utility softwares, like for example, how you need to, like for example, task managers is the best example for the utility softwares that how you need to utilize your stuff and all. And finally, it comes with the operating system. So when it comes to the operating system, so operating system is a type of a software or a system software that is acting as a bridge between the hardware and a software. That means it is actually working as the bridge or it is actually working to, uh, to start up the or to have an end-to-end -end, uh, communication between a hardware and a software. If there is no OS, obviously we cannot have a communication between a hardware and a software. Now, when it comes to the types of the software, you may say the examples of the software. So we do have Windows, we do have iOS, that is most commonly found in your Apple devices. Then we do have Androids, Linux, Pangoin, Unix, Fedora, Ubuntu, and DOS. Okay, now what are those? Like you, you may have heard about the Windows, iOS, Android, DOS, and DOS, I think so. But might be you haven't heard about the Linux, Pangoin, Unix, Fedora, Ubuntu, and all. Now, what's the difference between these two things? Now, the, there are two types of softwares, the closed kernel and the open kernel. Now, what do you mean by the closed and the open kernel? So, closed kernel means that if you cannot change the programming, I have just paused up the screen, so just hold on, I need to show you something. Okay. So, okay. Now, here we are. Now, over here, this is the Google platform right now. If I am going to view the source page over here, so I can see this programming, but I cannot make any kind of the amendments in this programming. So if I cannot make any kind of the amendments in that particular programming, so that is known as the source code. Whereas, oh, sorry, 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 um, my bad. That is particularly known as the closed kernel. But if I can make any kind of the changes in this particular stuff, so that is known as the open kernel. So coming back to the topic. Sorry. Okay, so Windows, iOS, Android, DOS, all these are basically closed kernel. That means you cannot make any kind of the changes in that. Whereas when it comes to the Unix, Linux, Fedora, Ubuntu, Pangoin, all these are open kernel that means you can make any kind of the amendments in the basic programming of these softwares now when it comes to the types of the interface that how are you going to communicate with the system so there are two methods now what are those two methods the two methods are regarding like for example if i need to open up the pan over here so i am just going to click over this pan icon so if I'm utilizing the icons over here or the graphics over here and I'm just tapping over that or clicking over that and I'm utilizing that particular stuff. So that is known as the graphical user interface GUI. Obviously this GUI is gonna take a more space as compared to the other stuff. That's user friendly as well, okay? But when it comes to the CLI, so CLI is a command line interface. You particularly need to 
perform or you need to enter the command like for example if you can see the screen can you see the command window over here yes. okay so i'm just writing up the command over here that is regarding okay now you can see uh, i think so i will be getting a timeout over here yeah the reason behind it because this 192.168.0.1 is uh, an ip regarding the testing ip for the tp link tp link is a uh, router over here in pakistan okay so if i'm not getting this particular stuff that means i need to put up a command for this stuff okay so for each and every stuff i need to put, uh, put up a particular command so i need to remember the commands but as they are not user friendly and there are no graphics or there are no colors attached to this part so they are going to take up less space in the memory this is the advantage but they are not user friendly so obviously that's a disadvantage so am i clear to over here any issues anas ashina arba yes sir. anas yes sir okay, clear okay great yeah. Now we're coming back to the task of an operating system. Now what are the tasks of an operating system? So there are multiple tasks of an operating system. For example, the first one is regarding the SCI. That's a human computer interface. And we just learned there are two types of interfaces, okay? Multitasking, now you can see the screen that I have opened up the Chrome as well. I have opened up the Zoom as well, the whiteboard, OneNote, Annotator, and uh, File Explorer. I have opened up multiple tasks over here, but open, sorry, multiple applications over here. So that is known as the multitasking that if I am working at a time or at a mean time, if I am working at multiple applications, so that is known as multitasking. But when it comes to the multi-programming, so what do you mean by the multi-programming? Multi-programming is a sort of thing that if I am utilizing one stuff, but I do have opened, like for example, on Zoom, you may see that I have opened up two files over here. So that is known as, just hold on. Okay, so if I'm utilizing one application and over that one application, I'm opening up two or three files at a mean, at a mean time. So that is known as multi-program. Error handling, if we are finding any kind of the runtime error, so that is also the responsibility of a system or you may say of an operating system to handle that particular error. Coming towards the interrupt handling, now what do you mean by the interrupt over here? So I do have written over here that it's a special type of a signal that is generated by an hardware or an application software or by the system software as well. And the priority of the interrupt is always high. Now what do you mean by that particular thing, that priority of interrupt is always high? Like for example, I'm teaching you guys right now and for example, there is one other student from outside and he's asking me to help him out. So obviously I need to check him out that what is the query regarding what he's asking something from me. So I will be asking you guys to just please hold down that like this I did uh, meanwhile ago, okay? So I just asked you guys to hold down and I process his query first of all, okay? So always remember that the priority of interrupt is always high. Once I am done with the interrupt, I will be coming back to my original process. Similarly, at the meantime, buffer. Buffer is something loading of the data. When you're going to load data that is particularly known as buffering of data okay now batch processing batch means that i am holding up multiple applications or multiple tasks at a time and at this meantime i'm just gonna or you may say at the similar time i'm processing all those applications all together so that is known as batch processing file utilities contain whether you may say uh, cut, copy, paste, delete sort of the thing. Security management includes with the password handling, the firewall handling and all stuff like that. Similarly, when it comes to the uh, user management, so you might have seen that there are two or three users at the meantime. So we can utilize those users on the similar, uh, you may say on the similar application or similar operating system. Uh, one more is their memory management. Memory management is something that uh, how you are going to utilize your primary memory or how you're going to utilize your secondary memory so that is also the task of an operating system so am i clear over here or are there any issues here yes sir yes sir Anas, is it clear to you so can you repeat the last part uh, regarding the memory management right yes Okay, memory management, as I told you, let, let me show you as well, so that it would be quite easier for you to get it. 
Okay, so now process. Okay, you may see that there are multiple applications right now that are being utilized and the memory that are being utilized by Google Chrome is 112.6 MBs and then by the Microsoft Whiteboard, it's 86.1 MBs. The highest is being uh, utilized by the Zoom that is 243.8 MBs. Okay, so that is basically the task of an operating system that how much memory, what type of the application is being uh, processing or how much it is utilizing. So that particular thing is known as the uh, memory management. Is that clear now? Yes. Now, it's great enough. now let me show the thing from the book as well so that you guys can be clear about that. Okay. The good part is that, that the same topic with the same wordings, same graphs, all the things are same for your O levels as well as for your AS level, even though the name of the topic is also same, softwares. Okay, now when it comes to the types of the softwares, so we do have different types of software as we just discussed right now. Now, what the new thing is over here, what do you need to do? You basically need to learn these things, general features of the system software, general features of the application software. Now, there is nothing new in this thing. We have already discussed this thing within the lecture. Now, the, uh, there are the applications, or you may say the examples given of, over of an application software, similarly with the application of the system software. Sorry, uh, the examples of the system software. Utility softwares. Okay, now there are two things that I haven't told you about. The heuristic checking, the false positive, and the quarantine. This I will be explaining you guys when it comes with the security and ethics topic. I will be explaining you over there. Uh, with Arva and Ashina, I think so. I have explained this thing to you guys. Uh, have I? Or you have done with me in the security part or not? You haven't explained it. Yeah. Oh, Okay, okay, so I will be explaining that again, no issues. Okay. Now moving ahead, uh, the backup software and all, what you need to basically do over here, you basically need to learn or you may say study few of the things. Now these were the tasks that were of an operating system that I just told you guys over here. Okay, now what you need to do over here, you basically need to learn the features. This is the, okay, you need to learn this table as well. That's the difference between a command line interface and a graphical user interface, the advantages and the disadvantages. You need to have a view of this because they may be asked in your papers. Now, when it comes to the memory management, so there are few of the functions or you may say few of the features given over here for each of the tasks, like for example, for the memory management, for the security management, and all these sort of the things for the hardware management on all these sort of the things. So you guys need to have an idea about this thing because it may be asked in your paper, either for your AS level or either for your whole levels, it may be asked in your paper that what were the features or what are the features of that particular stuff. So you guys need to have an idea about that particular thing so that you can note that down. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Anas and Ashina Vita. Yes, sir. Okay, so now we need to start with the second phase of this topic. Now, what's the second phase of this topic? Okay, so we are back over here. Sorry for the delay. And now we're coming to the second phase of this topic that is regarding the languages and language translators. So first of all, we need to understand that what is a programming language. So we need, when it comes to the programming language, so you may say that electronic instructions, why they are the electronic instruction because obviously they will be converted into the ones and zeros because that's the only language that is understood by the machine okay so electronic instruction that are commanding your computer what operation it needs to perform is particularly known as the programming language now when it comes to the types of the languages so we do have in basic three types of the languages the low level language or you may call it as the binary as well or you may call it as the language of ones and zeros as well as well as you may call it as the machine language as well. That is particularly the language that is understood by the machines. Then we do have the assembly language. 
that is utilizing the mnemonics. Now, what do you mean with the mnemonics over here? Mnemonics means the special characters that is plus, minus, multiplication symbol, the division symbol, the mod symbol, the hashtags, the question marks, the less than symbol, the greater than symbol. All these stuffs are basically known as the assembly language. They are basically utilized to uh, pro uh, to program a processor. Okay. Then we do have a high level language. Now that is a particular language that is understood by the humans. Now, when we further classify a high level language, so that high level language is basically classified into further two categories. That is a very high level language and that is a natural language. Now, what are the differences between a high level language or very high level and a natural language? There is only a single difference. Now, what's that difference? The difference is that, that they are more user friendly or you may call it in a particular um, terminology you may call or a technical wording you may call it that there is the syntax of the very high level language is easier than the high level and similarly the syntax of a natural language is easier than a very high level language. Now, what is an, uh, what do you have an idea about the terminology syntax? Syntax is something that way of writing a particular thing, way of writing a program or way of writing a particular thing is known as the syntax. And if you are going to commit any kind of the error when it comes to writing up the particular program or particular thing, so that is known as the syntax error. Now coming towards the next part, that is the language translators. Now what are the language translators? Obviously we cannot get the binary language. And the system cannot get the high level language. So there should be something that should have, that should work as a bridge or that should help us out to communicate with each other. So these are known as the language translators. Now these are the tactic utility software once again because they are helping you out to run your system. But what type of the utility software? They are basically converting a high level language into the machine understandable language. And similarly, or on the contrary, they are converting a low level language or a machine language to the high level language back again. Now, when it comes to the types of the translators, so we do have three different types of the translators, compilers, interpreters, and assemblers. Now, what is a compiler? Compiler is something whole program at once. Why, why I've written over here whole program at once? They will be basically utilizing or they will be checking out the entire program at once and they will be informing you about all the things in detail that you have committed a mistake over here, then over here, then over here, then over here, and so on. But when it comes to the interpreter, so interpreter is working line by line, or you may just write it down instruction by instruction or statement by statement in any format. So that is particularly known as the interpreters. Now, how are they working? When it, okay, now interpreter is gonna check out for the first line or the first instruction, okay, that's fine. Coming to the next instruction. Now there is an error in the second instruction. So it's gonna halt over there. It will be asking in you to correct that particular error. Once you have corrected that error, it will be going back to the initial stage and then again starting with the initial state. Okay, now statement number one is fine. Great enough. Now statement number two is fine. Great enough. Checking out for statement number three and so on. So as many times as it's going to find out the error, it's going to stop over there asking you to correct that error. Once you have corrected that error, it's going to start, start again from the very initial point or you may say from the start point. The reason is once you are going to correct that error, it may have not affected the previous program. So that's the reason it's starting again and again. And finally, we do have the assemblers that are converting assembly language into the low level language according to the book. But what I have written over here, executes.exe files. Exe files are basically known as the executable files both statements are fine. The reason is exe files are basically written in an assembly language. That is the reason that you may write converts assembly language into the low-level language or vice versa. Or you may write it down that executes.exe files. Am I clear till over here? Any issues still here? Clear, sir. Clear. Okay. And Ashina Mita? Yes, sir. Okay, great enough. Now, Object code. Now, what is the object code? Always do remember that when it comes to the source code, so source code is something that the program that you are writing in a high level language, that means a human understandable language. So it is particularly known as the source code. Whereas when it comes to the object code, so object code is a type of a program that is written in a low level language. 
So anything that is written in a low-level language, that is known as the object code, whereas anything written in a high-level language is known as the source code. So compiler do creates a source code. Sorry, do creates a low-level uh, object code. The reason behind is because we are utilizing the compilers when we are finally executing the program. But object code is not created by an interpreter. The reason is because we are utilizing the interpreters when we are coding something so that we can find out the errors. Obviously, compilers are fast as compared to the interpreters, but compilers, sorry, interpreters are more beneficial as compared to the compilers. Am I clear over here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we are coming to the final task that's regarding types of the errors. So there are different two types of the error, the syntax error and the logical error. As I told you that if you're committing any kind of the mistake while writing on the program, so that is known as the syntax error. Whereas when it comes to the logical error, so if you are creating any kind of the mistake while creating up the logic of a program, so that is known as the logical error. Now coming to the next phase. Now, the next phase of this topic is regarding the translators. Okay, one thing I have left with types of programming languages and IDEs. Now, what are IDEs? IDE is something integrated development environments. Now, these are the particular areas. You can see the book. Are you guys able to see the book? Yes. Okay. So these are the places where you are going to code something. So that particular place is known as the ID. Now there are five features or four features of an ID. So let me show that first of all to you. Let's hold on. Okay. Now features of an ID, they are important. Code editors, where you can just write up the code or you can make any kind of the amendments in that. Translators, obviously we learned about three types of the translators, the compiler, the interpreter, and the assemblers. Runtime environment with a debugger. That means it should inform you about the errors as well as it should allow you to correct that errors. Error diagnostic, auto-completion, auto-correction, and finally, auto-documenter. That means it should give you the indentation, and finally, Pre-typing. Now, what do you mean by the pre-typing? Pre-typing means if you can see it over here. So this is known as an indentation. That module is at the back, then sub is a bit forward, then console is again a bit forward, and it's changing the colors as well. So that is basically known as the pre-editing. Oh, sorry, pre-typing, uh, pre printing. Okay. Now, whatever we have learned about the translators, the compilers, the interpreters, and the standards, this table 4.3 is basically the summary of all those stuff. If you're gonna learn about this or you are just clearing your concept from this table, that means you have learned the entire topic of compilers, interpreters, and assemblers. That means the entire topic of the translators. There are a few of the advantages and disadvantages as well. So for the O-level students, it's quite it is quite beneficial to uh, have the concept about this stuff. But for AS student, for honors for you, you may say that you need to know about them. It may be asked in a particular scenario-based question, not directly, okay? Similarly, when it comes over here, so we do have the advantage and disadvantage of the high and the low level languages as well. Again, you need to have the concept about that. At least you should know the two, two points for each if they ask in any format. So you may note it down or you may write it down over there, okay? So that was all for this topic. And that is the end of the software topic. Any queries if you need to ask, so you may you are free to ask. Is that clear to you guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so that's all for today. And tomorrow we do have a class as well. And uh, most probably you'll be having an extra class on Friday as well. So I will be informing you about the timings as well. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Love this.